Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this video. I actually have a legitimate reason to go out today. I've got to um, to take a drive down to a place called Bognor Regis. And uh, while I'm there, I'm also going to pick up some uh, some furniture, an item of furniture that my wife bought um, from someone. So yeah, it's really nice to have an opportunity to actually go out in the car. So um, this video is just going to be another one of my driving around videos in the Polestar 2. So yeah, please stick with me and uh, hopefully you'll see some nice shots of the Sussex countryside in the UK and uh, some, yeah, some experiences of the Polestar 2. It's always fun to go out in this car and actually spend a couple of hours of driving. So um, yeah, let's have a look at the map and we'll see where we're going to go today. So, I mean, I've said this in so many videos, but I love the fact that you can uh, store um, previous searches. So I have already, I've already put in Bognor Regis. That's something that I looked at yesterday and that's the route that I'm going to take. So yeah, it's, it's showing, yeah, so it's... Boyd's Road closes on A280. You are on the fastest route. You should reach your destination by 9.47. Okay, that's, that's a nice bonus. So um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's taken that into account and it's showing this is the route along a road called the A272 then down the A24 and along this road down into the destination but um, what I decided I would do today is I'm going to stop and charge over here um, on my way to to Bognor Regis on the A24. So you can see here that I've got 62% battery remaining and uh, it says on the map here that I'm going to arrive with 45%. So that is, uh, let's see, 45 to 62, that's 17% battery. So yeah, I'd easily make it back, no problem. But the nice thing is that um, on my route, there is, if I type in, um, let's see if this works, BP Ashington, there we go. The BP in Ashington has a 150 kilowatt charger and uh, I've used this quite a bit in some of my other videos that you might have seen already. But it's a nice place to stop and uh, get a coffee and something to eat on the way because I haven't actually had any breakfast yet. And I've got uh, quite a lot of credit with uh, BP Pulse um, because Polestar were very kindly, I think it was cars ordered last year, uh, very kindly um, gave us some credit with uh, I think it was 450 pounds, which is really nice. That That is actually going to go a long way and it's quite difficult to use that up at the moment. So um, yeah, it's a really good opportunity to stop on the way there and just charge up for a few minutes. So let's head off and uh, yeah, enjoy the video. Hopefully there's some useful stuff in here. And if you haven't already liked and subscribed and uh, done all that kind of thing, that would be really great. I'd, I'd appreciate the subscribe and a click of the notification bell down below. And uh, yeah, let's head off. Okay, so we are charging up now at this uh, BP Pulse location on the 150 kilowatt chargers. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna stay here for a few minutes. I'm gonna grab a coffee and a snack and uh, yeah, get some of that um, free electricity that uh, Polestar very kindly have provided through uh, BP Pulse, which is nice. Um, something I wanted to mention that I didn't uh, say earlier is that I haven't yet had the software update. So if you, um, if you have a Polestar or you've been following this, there is a new software update out, which is always very exciting. You always see people um, that are Tesla fans getting very excited about this kind of thing. And I think that'll be the case for Polestar as well, once these kinds of updates are more common. So um, I'm mentioning this because I'm looking down again at the screen on my phone and I'll, I'll share this with you on the screen here so you can see this, but the newest update available brings Android 10 to the display, the tablet, um, and uh, various updates, including um, the Harman Kardon enhanced surround sound, um, some stability improvements for the climate timers, which is good. Now, this is a key thing, 360 camera quality and stability improvements. That um, I hope that the quality of the reversing camera at, at night is improved because that, um, 
it is very hard to see what you're doing when you're reversing at night. Uh, some Bluetooth changes, owner's manual. Uh, again, I have posted a video about this. The, the way to get your owner's manual back is to uninstall one of the uh, updated uh, PDF viewer apps. Um, so it looks like they've, they've solved that problem. But um, these things at the bottom could be the most interesting, depending on what's actually happened. But um, range improvements, DC charging, incremental speed improvements, and AC charging stability improvements. Now, the one that, uh, catches, that, that catches my eye there is obviously DC charging. Incremental speed improvements. Well, it'll be interesting to see what that actually means, whether or not we're getting a significantly faster charging, because I've mentioned this many times and others have done the same. The 150 kilowatt charging on the Polestar is yet to be achieved as far as I'm aware. I haven't actually seen anyone in the real world post pictures or videos showing that they've managed to get that kind of charging speed. So if you are not familiar with this, obviously all electric cars charge at different speeds and different rates. The Polestar is claimed to be able to charge at up to 150 kilowatts. Now, of course, we can plug into a charger like this, um, and I've used this one several times. I have yet to see more than, say, 110, 120. So it'll be nice to see if Polestar have actually added any noticeable improvements to that um, side of things. Now, range improvements as well. I've seen some uh, some comments by people saying that they, they saw better consumption after the update. So hopefully I'll, I'll get mine done fairly soon and be able to test that properly. It would be nice if they have done some tweaks to the battery or um, you know been able to, to enhance that in some way. That'll be great. So yeah, I am not driving with this update installed. So if anyone's watching this and wondering, this video is based on... Uh, before they updated the Android 10 version, which I think the date on the software is 1st of December. Mine's the one from before that. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at the charging speed. Uh, it is very slow at the moment. Temperature outside is just six degrees, but I'm getting just 71 miles per hour. Now, I've talked about this before, but um, generally about 2.5 uh, miles per kilowatt hour is what um, the Polestar seems to use for its calculations. So that's uh, implying that I'm getting just 28 kilowatt charging here. Now, um, that is extremely slow. Battery level is 59%, so I would expect to see much better than that. Uh, it is a slightly unusual number to see. Now, when you get this kind of scenario, and uh, I've seen many people have this kind of experience online on Facebook groups, it is always hard to work out if there's something wrong with the car or if it is to do with the charging unit. Um, now that is a very, very difficult one to establish. In a scenario like this, the battery is quite cold because I haven't driven the car for a couple of days. It was fairly cold last night, maybe three degrees, six degrees now. I've driven 20 minutes to get here. Um, and the battery is at 60%. Now, we, on the Polestar, we tend to get best charging speeds at lower battery percentages, um, below 50%, probably around, um, you know, anything up from 10 to sort of 40%. That is where you're going to get your best charging speed. And then it will drop on a sort of step down basis from there and then get really slow past 80%. Um, however, from memory, no, 60%, 78 miles per hour, 30 kilowatts? No, that's not correct. So um, my other charging tests on 50 kilowatt charges, um, ones that I know to be working at a, a correctly, I would, I would typically get 45 to 48 kilowatt charging on those all the way up to uh, 80%. So it, it does charge well on those. And that um, seems from my experience to have been okay, even when it's relatively cold. This is a, a lot slower than, than I've experienced. So my point here is that I, I wouldn't want to say either way. This could be uh, an issue with the charging unit. I don't know. Or it could just be that it is cold and that's just the way that the car is, is charging at the moment. It's very, very difficult to know or establish. But one thing I will say is uh, for me at the moment, it doesn't really matter. I'm just getting some free power. I'm going to go grab a snack and some coffee and I'm going to leave probably within 15 minutes. Um, but if you were intending to stay in charge up to 80%, yeah, I guess it could be a little bit annoying that you have to stay a little bit longer because it's slow. But um, yeah, it's just the way it is. Now, the, the real key thing to optimize your charging when you're going on longer trips is actually not to end up in the scenario where you're charging at 60%. Don't stop at a rapid charger um, and do that. Try and plan your drive so that you get there with, say, 20%. Or if you're comfortable and confident, maybe 10%. And then you will get your faster speed. Your battery will warm up nice and quickly within the first 5 to 10% of, of charging and then it will it will be more efficient from then on. I actually haven't done this 
before. I've never stopped at 60% and tried to rapid charge. So perhaps this is normal for the Polestar. Um, but that's something to bear in mind. Don't aim to, to stop at higher percentages. Try and get down to 10, 20% and then rapid charge from then. Okay, so we're finished charging and uh, yeah, the battery is now 67%. It was uh, 11 kilowatt hours delivered over 16 minutes. So that worked out as a total um, of 41 kilowatts uh, that we managed on an average charging basis there for that short period of time. So yeah, very slow when you consider it's a 150 kilowatt charger. But yeah, please bear in mind the points I mentioned. Um, it could be that we're at a higher battery percentage. It could be that the battery's not very warm. It could be the charge is not operating correctly. There are all kinds of factors that can result in slightly slower charging. So unfortunately, it's just one of those things. Sometimes you just have to accept it, get what you can and uh, wait as long as you need to and then head off. Okay, so yeah, time to go to continue on to our destination. Okay, so I've reached destination and uh, done what I needed to do. One of the extra things that I, I needed to do here was to um, get uh, this uh, piece of furniture that's just behind me. And you can see that fits nicely into the back of the car. Now, this is one of the things about the Polestar that is so good is the boot space, the boot opening and the seats flip down. You can get quite a lot in here. And uh, yeah, this small cupboard seat was one of the things I, I needed to pick up today while I was out. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm really impressed with the Polestar for that. It is the perfect choice of car if space and uh, the hatchback style opening is important to you. So the consumption was, uh, was actually really good by the time I got here, 35 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. And we traveled uh, 35 miles in total, just over an hour's driving. Temperatures warmed up to about seven degrees. And today I've been driving with the, the one pedal driving in the low setting. So again, I mentioned that before in other videos, I find that actually is the most comfortable balance between the two. One pedal driving off kind of coast too much and standard actually can be a bit aggressive um, and it can be a little bit uh, tiring to drive like that. So I've been going with low lately. So yeah, it's time to head back and uh, it's about 35 miles, exactly the same route back. And I think what I'll actually do is uh, I'll stop at that, um, that BP location again and rapid charge and we'll be down to uh, I guess um, let's have a look actually um, let's just have a look at Google Maps yeah. on Google Maps um, if we navigate back from here to let's uh, select that same BP that's going to be 38 minutes and we're going to get there with 46 percent so um yeah, I think let's try that and we'll see what kind of charging speed we get on exactly the same charging unit and see if it's any better than when we were driving down. If the charging unit's performing correctly and it was the car that was holding back on the charging speed, then we should get a lot better this time because the car will be much warmer and the battery will be in a better position to accept a higher charging speed. So uh, yeah, let's head off and uh, we'll see what happens when we get there.
Okay, so we're back at the charger now, and uh, yeah, it, as you can see on the display, we've now done 57.2 miles, 35 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. So it's exactly the same. No, almost no change from driving um, basically halfway back. So um, yeah, let's get plugged in and we'll see uh, if we get any better charging this time. So we're down at 47% on the battery and uh, temperatures stay quite cool at about six degrees. So yeah, let's plug in and see what happens. Okay, so we're plugged in and charging now. And uh, yeah, good news this time, we're getting 144 miles per hour on the display at 50% uh, battery. So let's uh, let's work that out, 144 divided by 2.5 is about 57.6. So yeah, really fast charging. No, not really at all. Uh, 57 kilowatts, yeah, that's okay. That's better than we were getting earlier, which was 30 to 40. So we are at least getting a bit more speed, but still, that's pretty slow. Um, so I don't know, this is exactly the same charging unit. Um, I'm gonna leave it to charge here for a little while and see what happens um, and see if it gets any better. But yeah, at least it's charging a little faster than it was earlier. One thing that I, I think is quite interesting about this BP Pulse Point is um, it says on the charging unit that it's 175 kilowatts, but on the app it says 150 kilowatts. I don't actually know what um, what this charger is capable of. It doesn't really matter with the Polestar, but it's just an interesting discrepancy that um, the actual hardware unit has a higher um, kilowatt number on it uh, when you compare it to the actual claimed number on the app from BP. So yeah, let's stay here a little while and see what the charging is like. So if any of you have seen my um, Don't Buy a Polestar video, it, um, <laughs> that, uh, yeah, that video, did uh, have some uh, mixed responses, I would say. I think um, some people found that really annoying. But it is interesting how a clickbait style thumbnail really does get people to click on the video and it also gets people talking. Um, now, obviously, I really like the Polestar, as I've mentioned in so many videos. But um, the, the, the big thing that was frustrating me that caused me to do that video was the 4G issue, um, as well as the Wi-Fi. Now, from what I understand, the Wi-Fi is fixed with this new update. Um, I, I can't confirm that, but that's that's the rumor I've heard, um, and I'm hoping to be able to confirm that. The 4G issue, though, um, is a different story. I, I found that's almost been flawless um, since a probably two or three days after making that video. However, today it hasn't been flawless. Um, I went through an area where perhaps signal wasn't so good. It reverted to 3G, but then it didn't go back to 4G. It got, just kind of got stuck on 3G. Um, and that's a little bit annoying because some streaming uh, wouldn't work. In fact, it 3G isn't really good enough for some of the music streaming apps. And that's kind of annoying because then you just, you, you lose your ability to listen to music. Um, and now I've stopped, got out the car, got back in. 4G has appeared, but the dreaded X is back. So it isn't working quite as it should do. So yeah, there's still some work to be done by Polestar behind the scenes to fix this uh, data issue that a lot of people are having. It, it, isn't, it isn't solved. It has improved, I think, for many people, but uh, it, it's not yet fixed. And that is something that um, I really do hope that they get to the bottom of fairly soon. So I'm planning on doing a, a totally separate video soon about um, some of the music playing apps that are available. Um, for me, I don't really listen to the radio very much, so streaming music is um, something that I tend to do a lot more. And uh, I don't really want to do that via Bluetooth. I mean, I know that you can, there's nothing stopping you doing that. But interestingly, this car doesn't have a particularly easy place to uh, position a phone. So yeah, have a look at this. You can see here, right, that um, we've got the steering wheel, we've got the, the tablet display. There isn't really anywhere to easily, easily mount your phone. I guess you could get a holder and put it up somewhere around here. But um, yeah, I, I think this is something for iPhone users. If you do like to stream your music via Bluetooth, I'm guessing probably some of you have found a good place to put your phone, perhaps somewhere up here. Um, but that's really not some uh, route that I wanted to go down at all. Um, so for me, music streaming services and uh, Android Automotive is kind of the whole, the whole thing that's great about this car. That is assuming you have uh, actual data. There's the 4GX again that I mentioned. But um, yeah, some of the streaming apps are not quite perfect. I'm gonna, as I said, I'm going to do a separate video about this covering them all. But I've been trying out Tidal lately. And uh, this is uh, quite an interesting one to try because I'll just show you a couple of reasons why. One of the main reasons here is that you, you have the opportunity to select Hi-Fi as your streaming option. You can't select Master. That's understandable because that uses a lot of data. Um, but you can select Hi-Fi and that um, 
that's really good because that's that's a really great quality setting for listening to music that is better than you get with Spotify or YouTube music. Now, will you be able to hear it? Honestly, I don't know. Um, probably most people wouldn't even notice. The sound system in here is great, but uh, the, the quality of, and the technology with compressed music these days is very good. But um, still, it's nice to see the titles available because if you happen to have that at home, perhaps you like to listen to the master music or in actual fact, they do Dolby Atmos as well, which I quite like listening to at home. Um, then you can use that in the car as well. Now, one of the problems though is this. If you were to look for an artist, so I'm gonna, let's try and search for say the Beatles. And uh, this works really well, the search is great. Um, but it's not going to work now because we've got the 4GX. So yeah, <laughs> that's a great example of how annoying it can be. But let's have a look at some of my albums. So, uh, okay, I can't do that either. There we go. So no 4G, no music. And uh, yeah, that's frustrating. That's, that's really annoying. And if you can't tether your phone, then you're stuck without being able to listen to anything. Now, YouTube Music, that um, does have the option under here to do downloads so you've you've got some some stuff here where you can select downloads but does it actually work no it doesn't so what i'm trying to say here is that some of these music streaming apps have uh, a little bit of work to do still because you can't you can't use them when you have no data and uh, that i find frustrating so i'm hoping that as Android Automotive evolves and these music streaming services um, hopefully adapt a little bit more to these cars, that they will release more features. And one of those would be to have proper ability to choose and download offline music and have it actually work. Because let's face it, you're not always gonna have a data connection. You might dr drive through an area with bad signal or you might just have issues like, like I am today. And it would be nice to have been able to download some music to be able to listen to when you don't have a data connection. So we've been here for about 20 minutes and uh, nearly time to finish charging. I did a little bit of shopping and it's, it's interesting like these kinds of stops because I have been here just over 20 minutes and I the time flies by. I don't know if it's just me and I'm sl <laughs> slow at doing this kind of thing, but by the time I got inside, uh, used the bathroom, the toilets, and then come out, done a little bit of shopping, bought some lunch, a few things at Marks and Spencer's, back in the car, 20 minutes is gone already, and I'm up to 71%. So yeah, you know, this is the thing with, with charging stops. If it's at a location where you can get something useful done, then it, it's barely even noticeable that you're here. Um, I managed to find some uh, veggie jerky to uh to try while uh sitting on uh vegan vegan seats in the polestar um plant-based meat-free jerky and actually weirdly it's chewier than the actual meat version um it's harder somehow and uh yeah made of um textured vegetable protein mainly soya but uh yeah that was an unusual find i've never seen this before i thought it would be nice to give it a try but uh, yeah, anyway, so uh, back to reality. Uh, I'm gonna get out now, stop the charge and see what kind of actual um, charging speed we managed to achieve while we have been sat here. Okay, so we finished charging up and uh, yeah, basically that was a pretty slow average charge. You can see on the, on the screen here that the best way to calculate this kind of charge on a charger that doesn't tell you the kilowatt uh, rate that you're getting is to, uh, see how much it's delivered to your car and then use the time-based calculation to work that out. So this works out at about 51 kilowatts. That's pretty slow, but um, it's hard to know the reasons behind that. It may be that um, it's just because I stopped here with quite a high battery percentage and uh, that's that's all it managed to, to deliver. Or it could be the charging unit. You never quite know with these things. However, I did some shopping. I spent about 20, 22 minutes here and uh, that was no big deal. I mean, I, I wasn't you know, maybe I'm slow, I don't know. But um, by the time I'd gone into Marks and Spencer's and done the shopping, waited in the queue, gone to the toilet, come back to the car, uh, I was up at 73%. So yeah, not too bad. Um, let's head off and it says 66% uh, on arrival. And uh, yeah, we're good to go. Okay, so yeah, I just had the collision avoidance go off for the first time. That is something that I have not experienced before. Um, I was driving uh, along a road, probably about 50 miles an hour, and there was a bump in the road, sort of like through the fields, um, this kind of hump. 
and uh, you couldn't see over the other side. So as I went over the bump, there were two cars approaching, and just as I, I reached the top of that bump, those two cars were, were quite close on the other side, and uh, the collision avoidance just went off, and it, it just braked quite, quite aggressively. The car didn't actually come to a halt because it disengaged uh, fairly rapidly, but I, I would say, yeah, it really gave me a fright. That got my, my pulse racing, um, and obviously, yeah, that was phantom braking in that case, but I can kind of see why it happened because um, it uh, I guess the system must have got a little bit confused by the sudden appearance of these two cars in front, which it wouldn't have seen um, out in the distance as it appeared as I went over this uh, particular hump in the road. So yeah, my first experience of uh, phantom braking in the Polestar. Okay, so I've made it back and uh, that was a nice drive, 70 miles in total with a final consumption of 35.4 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. That's uh, not too bad. Again, that's like my standard thing these days, it seems. The weather was pretty good. The roads were kind of damp most of the time and a temperature of between four and eight degrees. So not very cold, but um, still not particularly warm either. Now that kind of consumption, if we look at 72.5 as the usable battery on the car, then we are looking at a range of 204.8 miles, so 205 miles total range. And uh, yeah, I mean, that that's okay for me. This was a mixed kind of drive with um, some driving through villages, uh, quite a bit at 60, 70 miles per hour on a dual carriageway, some cross country, so a very mixed kind of driving day. It wasn't particularly slow, to be honest. There was some, some you know, faster 60, 70 mile an hour driving that I'd say covered at least uh, a third of that total driving. So what is the cost of this kind of a drive? Well, that um, works out as 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour of electricity. So that kind of uh, that kind of consumption is quite easy to work out your cost. So I charged last night on Octopus Go at five pence per kilowatt hour. Now divide that by 2.8 and you get 1.78 pence per mile, which is incredibly cheap way of driving compared to diesel or petrol, which you're likely to spend more like 12 to 15 pence, depending on the car. If you're driving a car that's a 400 horsepower car, it's going to be quite a lot more in fuel. So um, yeah, definitely 15 pence minimum per mile. Now I charged at the BP Pulse uh, on that 150 kilowatt charger, that would be 27 pence per kilowatt hour. So if you take 27, divide that by 2.8, you get 9.64. So even on an expensive 150 kilowatt charger, uh, to be fair, the BP Pulse isn't the most expensive. It's actually quite reasonably priced, but even at that price, it is still quite a bit cheaper than driving an equivalent car that would be petrol or diesel. But a lot of the rapid chargers are more expensive than that. So you could pay, say, you know, 39 pence divided by 2.8, more like 14 pence. So what I'm trying to say is that even on the more expensive chargers, it's it's generally not going to be more than the cost of driving with petrol or diesel. And the idea is that you, you only really use those as and when you need them, um, not necessarily as your only way of charging your car. If you don't have a way of charging on your driveway, then of course you would need to use those more often. But there are ways to charge more cheaply than than using those 150 kilowatt charges so yeah i hope this video has been useful um it was another really nice day of driving around and i hope um, i've shared some useful information with you the 4g did come back towards the end of the drive which is nice but please polestar uh, i really want them to fix this permanently and properly because it's annoying having that uh, just randomly disappear when you're driving and you're trying to listen to music or use your maps. But uh, yeah, hopefully this video was useful. Please subscribe down below. That would be great. And I'll be back again with another video very soon. Thank you.